Welcome to Social Elo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. I was saddened when someone commented on a video I recently did, and the person mentioned about having been afflicted by what is called a spiritual spouse for eight years. It, it still grieves me, in part because I have been through that kind of affliction, and whether it's eight years, eight months, hours, minutes, or even seconds, it is too long. And the question was about deliverance. When it comes to deliverance from such things, Jesus is the deliverer. You could go to a hundred deliverance ministers and they may not be able to set you free because it's not always a matter of simply commanding a devil to leave in the name of Jesus. That may be a part of it. But if you notice that whenever Jesus was healing people, they may have had similar illnesses, but he used different methodologies of doing so. But a part of the deliverance is through knowledge, because the Bible tells us that through knowledge, the just are delivered. I'm going to share some knowledge with you, not only the person who made that comment, but for those who are going through this kind of affliction. Some of you don't even know about it. Um, for me, you may have seen the series that I was inspired to do called Identifying Your god ordained Spouse and the Counterfeits. At the time when I did those videos, I don't think I even knew of the spirit that is referred to as a spirit spouse, either a spirit wife or a spirit husband. Some of you may be laughing silly right now, saying what kind of nonsense is he talking about? But for others, it is real. And I can say to you, those of you who have been afflicted, are being afflicted, I understand. I'm gonna hit you with some scriptures. First off, in Hebrews 13 verse two, it states, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Well, there are two types of angels. The holy angels of the Lord and fallen angels, those of the devil. In Revelation 12, it speaks about there was a battle in heaven and the devil and his angels fought against Michael and his angels, but the devil and his angels lost. So there are evil spirits around. And some people have been entertaining these spirits unknowingly. Some have been having dreams or even feeling physical, physical sexual activity, oftentimes when they're asleep. They will wake up and there will be evidence of physical sexual activity. But it is actually a spirit that is doing this. And like Hebrews 13, 2 states about entertaining angels unawares. Why is that? When it's an angel, they can take on the form of a human being. For example, in Judges 13, an angel appeared to Samson's mother. There was a point, <laughs> okay, that, that's enough as far as evidence as angels taking a physical form. But for a lot of people, they don't see a physical form. They may, for example, hear or, or otherwise perceive things in their homes. Basically a spirit waiting for them to go to sleep. And these spirits are from what is called the enemy's marine kingdom. And it goes all the way back to Genesis 6. In Genesis 6, starting in verse 1, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, not men, but the sons of God, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So they saw these attractive women, these angels, saw these attractive women. They left their places in heaven and took these women 
as wives. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Why would the Lord say he wouldn't, his spirit would not always strive with man? But it's the angels that came down and did that. Now the angels have a price to pay. But we as human beings, we also have to stand our ground. In a sense, we have to divorce the devil. Not entertain those fallen ones who are trying to violate the laws of God. Who are trying to pervert our lives. Derail our God-ordained destinies. For that, he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So from that point in time, the Lord kept our lives at 120 years old. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. So these angels actually reproduced and they had giants. And they bear children to them. Isn't that something? The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So I'll pause here for a second. So these angels took the daughters of men as wives and reproduced. For some of you, you've had dreams where you got married. You consummated the marriage. You had children. And then you're wondering why you can't get married in the natural realm. Why it seems as if you have all these qualifications. It's like on paper, you are a hot commodity. But you may get into a relationship and it just suddenly falls apart. Or you may not be able to get into a relationship at all. And you may have dreams about having children in the spiritual realm, but in the natural realm, you're what is called barren. That is one of the ways how the enemy comes in. In Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30, it speaks about how the enemy came in while the men were asleep, while, while the men were asleep, and they sowed tares amongst the wheat. One of the primary ways the enemy comes in is via dreams sometimes visions and people are having dreams about getting married going on a honeymoon and oftentimes there is water associated with these kind of dreams so you go on a honeymoon it's not necessarily to the mountains of Colorado it's to some exotic location where the beach is and you may not have, may not have a dream for example about getting married but you may have a dream about going on a honeymoon and that's how sinister these devils are because if you're having a dream about going on a honeymoon, that means you're married. If you're having dreams about having children, it can get really bad. So believe me when I say, if you've been having any of these kind of things, I understand. And not only will you have dreams about marriage, honeymoon, family, but you'll also have dreams where you may have illnesses, where you're losing money. And these things will manifest in the natural realm where you may make $100,000 per year, but you're struggling to make ends meet. It's like things are always coming up for money to get siphoned from you. Maybe things are always breaking around the house. People are always coming to you for money and it seems like a good cause. But these are things the enemy is using to rob you blind. And the things the Lord has in store for you, you have not been able to reap those blessings because also in a marriage. And these devils, yeah, they're perverting it. But in a marriage, you become one flesh. So these devils are perverting it where what belongs to you also belongs to them. And the enemy does come to steal, but to kill and to destroy. But Jesus came that you may have life and life more abundantly. At this point in time, whom the Son makes free is free indeed. And you're going to get free of this mess. And it continues. And they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Likewise, I will also say this. There are some people who are having these dreams. And the sexual nature of these dreams, they vary. It could be like someone who is seductive, and some people may say it's the best sex they've ever had. For others, it's, more, it's a more violent act. So a person with a spirit spouse uh, and another person with a spirit spouse, they may go through different things. And by the way, initially I was going to call this video Living with a Spirit Spouse. But Lord had me change it to living without a spirit spouse. Because don't even claim those things as a spouse. You are truly divorcing the devil. Because in the first place, the covenant was evil. The covenant was not of the Lord. In Deuteronomy 24, it speaks about if a man marries a woman and he finds something unclean about her, that he puts her out of his tent and write her a writ of divorcement. And there's nothing more unclean than a filthy spirit coming into your life. Now, you may have let the spirit in by engaging in sexual activity. In fact, um, in Hebrews 3, or Hebrews 13, it continues by saying about the marriage bed being undefiled. But that doesn't apply between a person and a spirit. Jesus said that there's no marriage between spirits. So these spirits know better. And a part of the reason we're mentioned about the thoughts of men were evil. There are some people who have, who these spirits have come into their lives and they don't mind at all. They're complicit with it. They'll even conjure up those spirits. They don't want to be delivered. They do not want to be delivered. But for those, and there are some people who, they have had those experiences, maybe didn't know what it meant, maybe didn't mind, but once they realized what the devil was doing, then they wanted no parts of it. So it doesn't matter how those spirits came in, we're going to shut the door on those spirits. And a part of this is through knowledge, knowing your rights. No spirit has a right to come and claim you as a child of the Most High God. Jesus died. He, paid his, he shed his blood on the cross at Calvary for you. No spirit has any rights to you. None. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and the beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for all repenteth me that I have made them. And it continues by speaking about Noah. And that set the stage for the great flood. And that's part of how these spirits are marine spirits and sometimes they'll show up in your dreams and you won't see a spirit they may take the form of a human being but sometimes they're so sneaky where they're initiating you into the marine kingdom they're trying to forge or reinstate covenants against you by simply appearing as sources of water in your dream you may have a dream about taking a shower and it's like you're touching and come into agreement you may have a dream about swimming in an ocean. Those are the kind of things where a spirit is showing up in different ways, trying to get you to come into a covenant agreement with them. And a part of it is, if you realize you're having a dream like that, about in the dream, about rebuking those spirits, rebuking them in the name of Jesus. But if you don't have the wherewithal to do that, and they'll also do sneaky things like use sorcery, where if you're perceptive, you may be lying down getting ready to go to sleep and you may suddenly smell like a sweet smell in your room like roses or something sweet and when something is sweet your inclination is to inhale it but even though it may smell sweet it is something to subdue you spiritually subdue your will so you're inhaling something thinking it's sweet but it's something the enemy is trying to do as a part of sorcery so that you may be having a dream and your ability to fight is lessened because of whatsoever it is that you inhaled and that's another thing. As a part of the fight, you start smelling stuff like that. You perceive a spirit in your room. You start warring against the thing before you even go to sleep. Shut it down, or at least try to, before it gets its best opportunity to attack you and try to lock you in a 
spiritual marriage. And I use the term loosely. I mentioned before that Jesus is the deliverer. And how he delivers it is up to him. He can do it in one, one motion where that spirit leaves and never returns. And by the way, that's nothing about these spirits. They are very stubborn. They will get cast out. And one of the ways I put it, it is like you went to divorce court. The judge signed off on the divorce. Both you and your now ex walked out of the courthouse with divorce decrees. You're thinking you're going to throw a party that night to celebrate. And you go home and the person that you are now officially divorced from is in your house, like waiting for you to come home, and that person is speaking to you as if you didn't get divorced. It's like, huh? It's like, what do you even do in my house? That is how these spirits are. They're possessive and they're persistent. And one of the things is, you have to live a holy life. Any doors you may have opened in times past, well, one is to ask the Lord to help you close those doors, but you also have to keep them closed. And there are different ways where these spirits can come into a person's life. For example, a person may have been indoctrinated via a family member who was dabbling with marine spirits. Like if you have a family member who's into witchcraft, that person may have opened a door to you. If you are engaged in sexual immorality, even viewing pornography, engaging masturbation. There's some people who are debating whether masturbation is a sin or not. Let me tell you, it is. You engage in masturbation, you open a door for a spiritual spouse. So there are a lot of ways. Then there are also ways, in addition to the involuntary way where if a family member is engaged with a marine spirit, you can also get a spirit spouse if someone sexually assaults you. These are spirits. They come out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And part of what they do is they try to forge illegal, legal, well, they try to forge legal covenants with you by using illegal means. And that's where you have to know the word of God. Stand against these spirits. Stand against these spirits. And this is especially for those. It is easier to deal with these spirits when they first show up. Because one of the things they do, the Apostle Paul wrote about, let Satan get an advantage of us because we're ignorant of his devices. So part of this is so you're not ignorant of his devices. So as soon as he tries his stuff with you, you shut it down then and there. Because these spirits are also territorial, which is part of the reason why you may go out for a job. Your resume is the best. You are the most qualified. But they will hire someone else because these spirits will go around and try to block your opportunities. So you want no parts of these spirits. And sadly, these spirits have been operating in a lot of people's lives covertly for years. But someone recently told me, an enemy revealed is an enemy defeated. So like I mentioned, Jesus is the deliverer and there are different ways he can do it. And I pray he uses this video, and I did pray beforehand, but I pray that he uses this video to deliver as many people as possible from these foul spirits. In Exodus 23, we get an example of how or why the Lord may not deliver us from whatsoever is plaguing us all at once. So there are times you may find out that when you're wrestling with these spirits, it's kind of like Ephesians 6, where it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You're literally wrestling with these spirits because they keep trying to come back. But one of the things you have to realize, and a part of the reason why the Lord had me title this Living Without a Spiritual Spouse, is because there are times when these spirits, the covenants have been broken, but they're trying to come back to forge a covenant. And whereas you could actually say that they were a spiritual spouse, that covenant has been broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. But they keep on coming back trying to forge those covenants. They want you to be ignorant of their devices. 
They want you to be complicit with them. That's why you have to keep on shutting them down. Keep on rejecting them. You're saying no as many times as it takes to shut these spirits down. And it takes determination. And there are times when the Lord will actually use this battle to help strengthen us. There are times when the Lord will use these battles so that we can, in turn, strengthen our brothers and sisters. There was a point where Jesus told Peter that Satan had requested to sift him like wheat. But Jesus said he prayed that his faith wouldn't fail him. But when he is converted, that he should strengthen his brothers and sisters. Likewise, when I saw the video, I prayed and was like, okay, Lord, what do I need to do? Because even I recently came under attack where a spirit was trying something with me. And there was a part of me that didn't feel qualified to give this message. But I do have a lot of knowledge on this. And I'm going to take you as... And this is not even about me because the Lord can use anyone to do anything. And a part of this is me sharing my testimony, practical experiences. And to also let you know that there are times when the spirit will come back as if... It still has a covenant with you, but it doesn't. And you have to keep on standing your ground. So whereas at one point in time, it was a quote-unquote spiritual spouse, it no longer is. What it is doing is trying to come back in. That is why you may keep on having dreams about getting married. It's like, why would you need to keep on having dreams about getting married if you were married? Why would you need to keep on having dreams about going on honeymoon if you didn't if you were actually married. So these are ways that the spirits will tell on themselves that the covenant have been broken. In fact, um, I think it was two days ago, the enemy was attacking and the Lord gave me a vision of a seal. And the seal was like white candle wax and white was representative of purity. And one of the things the Lord told me was the enemy, because I mentioned about these being water spirits, the enemy was trying to reign on something that he's already sealed. So the rain was not going to melt the seal. In addition, what the enemy tries to do is cloud your vision, cloud your perspective. So it's literally like they're trying to rain on you and all you can see is rain. And in the natural realm, no matter how rainy it is, the sun is still shining. And the Lord used that analogy after the, the vision of the candle or the seal was to let me know the enemy is trying to cloud my vision, but the sun is still shining. And not just the S-U-N, but the S-O-N, Jesus the Christ. Likewise, I also say this. The enemy will do a lot of things, and that's why he will attack with all these dreams, because he's trying to, in a sense, weave a web. The Lord recently gave me a vision, and in the vision, I saw that a wooded area but it had a lot of vines all the vines had been cut and I was actually on a train like as an engineer and the train was starting to move that vision represented everything the enemy had done in an attempt to keep me stationary but the Lord showed me that all those vines had been cut what happened afterwards the enemy counter attacked as if those vines had not been broken trying to get me to come into agreement with it so you have to be careful. Do not give these enemies, these, this enemy, any chance at all. No space in your mind, no space in your body, no space in your life. Keep on rebuking them. And another thing to keep in mind, when the enemy is fighting hard, the enemy is fighting hard because the enemy doesn't have you. If the enemy had you, he wouldn't have to fight. And also remind you, the battle is the Lord's and not yours. Even though throughout this, you've already been getting some things that you can do from your end, but the battle is the Lord's. And he determines the pace at which he does it. And a part of this process is to stick close to the Lord. And we can learn some lessons in Exodus 23, starting verse 20. The Lord said, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. The Lord has taken you to a place that he's prepared for you, and he didn't prepare a spiritual marriage for you. 
In the beginning, God created man, and then he sought a suitable helper for him. He didn't create a spirit, he created a woman. So marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is between a man and a woman, not a human being and an evil spirit. So those marriages, groundless. Those marriages, broken right now in the name of Jesus. Beware of him and obey his voice and provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. And part of that is the Lord is telling the Israelites, obey his angel that is going before them. Likewise, obey the Holy Spirit and what he tells you to do. Jesus said that some things would only come out by fasting and praying. And you may think you can go on a three-day dry fast, a seven-day fast, or 40 days. But you can do that, and the spirits may not leave because it's not the Lord's will. And it's not, say, it's not the Lord's will to set you free, but that's not how the Lord wants to do it or may not be in the Lord's timing. Like you may think you can go on a 40-day fast, and after 40 days, it's going to be broken. But rather than fasting for 40 consecutive days, the Lord may want you to do three here, five here. So you have to listen to the Lord regarding how he wants you to do it. And be cognizant of when things are being broken off you. Because it's the anointing that breaks the yokes. And that anointing, the Holy Spirit, he is still breaking yokes in the name of Jesus. So do not let the enemy fool you regarding you making progress. And I reiterate, there comes a point, as soon as you break the covenant, stop calling that thing your spirit spouse. If anything, you can call it a spirit that is trying to be your spouse. The devil is a legalist. legalist. Those devils are legalist, and they will gladly try to latch on based on the words of your mouth. So you have to shut them down in every single way. And it continues. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee unto, in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. So there are a lot of people in the land of Canaan. This also speaks to spirit spouses or spirits trying to be your spouse. There's that one spirit that is playing that role, but that spirit is usually not alone. It may have spirits associated with it, such as spirits of lust, adultery, fornication, rape. So there, there are spirits that it will use as a way to get in, a way to stay in. But the Lord says he will cut them off. All of those different people, he will cut them off. All those spirits, he will cut them off. And what you may find out is when the Lord is taking you through the, the deliverance process, you may find out that you used to have a lust problem, but suddenly you're not lusting anymore. You may still be having these dreams, but you're not lusting anymore. That means the spirit of lust has been cut off. So there are certain things the Lord will cut off, and you may not see, if you don't see the big picture, you'll think that you're still in the same position. And it continues. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And this is speaking about unseating those gods. And sure, you do not do anything to come into agreement with these devils. And a part of the reason why these spirits will attack you in dreams is oftentimes because you start living a more holy life. The things that you used to do in the natural realm, you don't do those anymore. So the enemy has to try to bring those things to you in a dream. 
So whereas he may have been an adulterer or a fornicator before, because you're not doing those things, then you start having dreams about these kind of things. And it's not because you, you're lusting after those things. It's because you're not willfully sinning, so the enemy tries to bring sin to you to give itself legal grounds to stay. Also, I mentioned that there are times when these spirits will not attack you directly, but they will come through someone. It's also an important thing. If you have a spirit that's trying to be your spouse and you're about to get into a relationship, you have to let that person know so that person will be able to discern that if they start, for example, if they're very attracted to you, probably thinking that the two of you are supposed to be married, and then suddenly their feelings start changing, that they know that the reason why their feelings are changing is because that spirit is attacking them. That's part of how they drive people off. Likewise, some people, oh boy, some people are quick to say that God hates divorce, but they never really forensically look at how the people were brought together. There are some people who came together in a relationship and even a marriage simply because there was a spirit that was playing the role of a spiritual spouse. And that spirit brought someone in that was a guarantee for a failed relationship or a guarantee for a miserable relationship. And that person was basically a vessel for that spirit to use. So there are things where for example, and I'll state it from a man's perspective, if you are a man, you get a divorce, and the person you divorce does not want to accept the fact that the marriage is over. And you're like, and you think to yourself, how is it this person does not want to accept the fact that a judge signed off on the divorce decree and it is now final? Because this is the person who was happy to go to the courthouse to get a marriage license. So why is a marriage license valid, but signed by the court system, but a divorce decree is not? In addition, the woman, after divorce, keeps your name as opposed to going back to her maiden name. Now, that is not always something that is necessary. But if the person is holding on to your, your name because the person is trying to make it seem as if two of you are supposed to get back or the two of you have never gotten divorced, those kind of things, you can suspect demonic entities at play. And that's how these spirits will use people. They will do things and it doesn't make sense because they're being spiritually, they're being spiritually influenced. So you have to recognize when the spirit is trying to come at you directly as a spirit and when the spirit is trying to come at you using people. Because also another thing, once you get this spirit out of your life, it's like it's always seeking a, a way to come back in. And if it can influence or even indwell in a person whom you may find attractive, positions that person, and you start looking at a person for too long, then that spirit takes it as the clearance to come back into your life. So you have to be discerning. And it's part of needing a close walk with the Lord. Because there are times when the Lord will clue you into certain things where you may see a person, but it is a spirit masquerading trying to come back into your life. And you have to shut that person down because it is a spirit trying to come back into your life. I know that was a lot. But again, through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. Again, walk closely with the Lord. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take the sickness away from the midst of thee. And that may be part of it, where the Lord may have to deliver you of illnesses. I mean, these spirits are foul. So, for those of you who may be having dreams about sexual activity, especially frequently, that is a spirit trying to forge a covenant with you. But what it may look like, simple sexual activity. And you may be thinking that you're celibate, you're having these dreams, and the dreams may seem like a gift from God. No, it is not. So, you may have a dream, for example, 
of having sexual intercourse with someone's spouse. That is twofold. That is a spirit trying to get you to forge a covenant with adultery. When you look at law, the actual laws of Moses, the laws of God, the penalty for adultery was death. So that spirit is literally trying to forge a covenant, get you to forge a covenant with death using sexual activity in a dream. So it's not just about sexual pleasure. That spirit comes about to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There are some people who have, where these spirits, the person will be on the edge of a breakthrough. The next thing you know, they have a dream of a sexual nature. And then that breakthrough breaks down. That's how the spirits come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Because it goes with them perverting the word of God, where a man and a woman becomes one flesh. It's just like what you have, they're entitled to. And they steal it that way. So every time you have a dream involving sexual activity, you have to reject those kind of dreams, renounce them, and ask the Lord to cleanse you of all sin and unrighteousness. And it continues. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. It says nothing cast their young. And there are times when people are having dreams of giving birth in the spiritual realm. And then they may get pregnant, but end up having a stillborn in the natural realm. There's some spiritual things going on. That's important why you have to reject those dreams. And it continues. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. So the Lord is the deliverer. He is going to make the enemy flee. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. And this is very key right here. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. So I say it again. I will not drive them out before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate. So there's even room for the enemy and a reason why the enemy would be in the land. And the beast of the field multiply against thee. So there are times when having one enemy actually keeps other enemy out. And a part of the deliverance process is the Lord spoke about when a, when a spirit is cast out of a person. It goes seeking rest elsewhere. And when it finds none, it returns and it calls it the house, returns to the house from where it was cast. And when he finds that it was swept clean, basically empty, it invites seven other spirits more wicked than itself. So apart from the Lord cleansing you, he is replacing what was in those areas with himself. All those things that you did to have a relationship with the Spirit, now though the products, the fruits of the Lord, of the fruits of let me get this right. The places that those spirits were occupying are places that now the Lord has to take care of. And this is a process. You don't want any room for the enemy to come back with more spirits for you to end up in a position worse than before. Which is a part where if you are not a believer in Christ Jesus and you have this kind of affliction, your only hope is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And for that, you can simply say something in effect. God, I'm not even sure if you're real, but I heard that you are. And I heard that you love the world so much that you sent your only begotten son who is known as Jesus. And that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that if we, I confess my sins, 
you're merciful, you're just to forgive and to cleanse me of those sins and unrighteousness. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins, my transgressions, and my iniquities, and to wash me clean and to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Something like that, or whatever comes out, because um, there are different ways where people come to the Lord. And by accepting Jesus, then you still have to start adhering to his principles. You have to leave your sinful life behind. Then he can deliver you. Because if not, if a person casts the devil out of you, it's going to come back. And you need the Lord's protection from it. And it continues. By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. So the Lord does it little by little. And sometimes the reason why he does it little by little is so that you know how to war. In Luke 4, 1 through 13, we see how the devil came at Jesus and Lord basically hit him back with the scriptures, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Likewise, the enemy drives out a devil. The devil tries coming back. You may know one or two scriptures relating to that devil. You hit the devil in the head with that scripture and tell it to be gone. And then you start learning the word more and more. You start having more of the Holy Spirit in you to where you may not know the Bible. Like, oh, um, Deuteronomy 6.16 says, it's tell the Lord thy God. But the Holy Spirit in you will speak those things out. There are times when a spirit may try to appear in your dreams and the Lord will manifest himself and you will handle that spirit in the dream because of the Lord. But he does it, or he may choose to do it, little by little. And you have to submit yourself to his process regardless of how long it takes. And continues, I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the sea of the Philistines. And from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. So part of the, part of the deliverance process is to break all evil covenants. If the enemy tries reinstating those covenants, which is why they come back in dreams, you break those covenants and you keep on breaking them until it's too costly for the enemy to try to reinstate those covenants. They shall not dwell in thy land. Those spirits shall not dwell in you or your presence, lest they make thee sin against me. And that's what those spirits are trying to do. Not only that, you may have dreams and things are happening in the dreams that are against your will. And they may make you feel dirty, may make you feel sinful, but they're the ones leading you into that sin. Now in the natural world, using the term, the devil made me do it, that one usually doesn't fly. But in dreams, there are times when people have done things or may find themselves doing things or you can say allegedly doing things, but it's because the spirits have set those things up. And there are times you may have a dream and you may not even remember the dream. Or you may have a dream and the dream so faint that you don't realize what's going on until you wake up. It's like maybe a few minutes later or seconds later. You may say, hold up, I was just dreaming about that. That is how sneaky these devils can be. Again, they're trying to forge covenants with you. So, they may try to lead you into sin, but the blood of Jesus cleanses all sin and unrighteousness. And it's a part of your armor. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. So they're trying to ensnare you. But you're going to keep on breaking out 
And I mentioned that the spirits are trying to defile you. Make you feel unclean. But like I said before, the blood of Jesus Christ, it cleanses all sin and all unrighteousness. It's like the prodigal son. He was working in a pigsty, but he returned to his father's house. So likewise, if something happens in a dream that is beyond your control, as soon as you wake up, you return to the father's house and ask him to cleanse you. And do not let anything that these spirits do to you make you feel unclean, because once the Lord cleanses you, you are clean. I won't go through the entire thing, but in Acts 10, there are three times when Peter was in a trance and the Lord showed him something and told him to kill and eat. And Peter said that he doesn't um, eat unclean things. And in verse 15 of Acts 10, the Lord said, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And basically, what the Lord has cleansed, do not let anyone call unclean. Those spirits, they are the unclean one. They cannot be cleansed. There is no forgiveness for them. Even if they could, and they were to ask the Lord for forgiveness, He will not forgive them. They are damned. And what they're trying to do is take you with them. But that is not your portion in life. Some people may tell you about fasting and praying to break these spirits. But it's not quite that simple. I'm going to cover in Isaiah 58 some points about fasting. Because fasting is not always what you think it should be. In fact, even in delivering this message, I was kind of like, I wasn't sure if I should do it. And then today I saw a message about um, the Lord will free you as you free others. And that was a part of my confirmation to actually deliver this message today. And actually is laid out here in Isaiah 58. Start in verse 1. Cry aloud, spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. You have to cry out aloud to the Lord. Ask Him to deliver you. Ask Him to deliver you. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore, have we fasted, they say, and thou seest not? Wherefore, have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? So these people are crying out to the Lord. And they're saying they've been fasting. Some of you can say the same thing. You have been fasting and praying. It's like, why hasn't the Lord delivered you? We continue. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? So have you been engaged in a fast that the Lord has chosen? Or are you doing things in accordance to maybe how you've been taught? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So let's listen to the fast that the Lord has chosen. To loose the bands of wickedness. You want to get loose, right? To undo the heavy, heavy burdens 
and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. So those are the things you want to accomplish by fasting. You want to break the yokes. You want to get free of this thing. But then the Lord continues by saying, Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. So let me pause. So the Lord isn't just speaking about not eating or drinking as part of the fast. He's speaking about doing good to others, others who are less fortunate. Feeding the hungry. Clothing the naked. And those are things the Lord may present to you as opportunities. Like I mentioned earlier, or just a few minutes ago, where I saw a message today about basically freeing others and the Lord will free you. Because, like I mentioned, I'm still in the fight, but it's the tail end of the fight against these foul spirits. But there are other things that the Lord has presented to me as opportunities. Things for me to do. And I have done those things. And I can, get, I can testify, I have seen a difference. I have seen a difference. The Lord said that, and John wrote, that people would know that we are believers based on, on our love for others. And this is not just about doing works for others, but it's about showing others the love of God. Showing others the love of God. So imagine that. You're trying to get the Lord's attention by afflicting your body by fasting from food and drink. But it's letting us know that you can also get his attention, probably even more so, by showing the love of Christ to others. And sometimes they don't have to, the people that you're doing good to, they don't have to know. Also another thing, when you're doing these deeds, don't do it to be seen of men. Yes, people may see you while you're doing it. But don't go feed the hungry and record it and do it on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Uh-uh. You're nullifying the effects. You're doing things as privately as possible. There are times when you may down to your last couple of dollars and Lord may give an opportunity to give all your money to someone, someone less fortunate. So this is not like, for example, you're quote unquote sowing into a ministry where the pastor is wealthy and they have a lot. No, no. The Lord will direct you. You could be in church and if you believe in paying tithes and offerings, which I won't even get into right now, if you have money that you're going to pay in tithes and offerings, the Lord may direct you to give it to your neighbor instead. And that fulfills this requirement here in Isaiah 58. That is a part of your fast. You're being a blessing to others and the Lord is being a blessing to you. Now this is not me saying about doing these things. This is the Lord bringing these things up as a part of a fast. Likewise, you can be on a fast, and for example, you can be on a fast and be in your house the entire time, fasting and praying, and that's great. But also part of this is, while you're fasting, maybe the meals you would have eaten on those days, that you give it to someone else. Maybe your neighbor down the, downstairs with three children, and the food you would have eaten you give it to your neighbors. Some of those kind of things. Earlier mentioned in Exodus 23 that the Lord 
would present certain things. You obey the angel. In this case, you obey the Holy Spirit. What he's directing you to do or the opportunities he's creating for you to, <laughs> for you to capitalize on. You'd be surprised. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Isn't that something? When the Lord gives you those opportunities to show the love of Jesus to others, and you do so. Because also, one of the ways the Spirit tries to attack is via any sin. And you have to even flee or abstain from the appearance of evil. So that Spirit may even try to bring people into your life to get you to sin, to get you to get, for example, angry. And the Bible tells us to be angry, but sin not. And do a little wrath, or the sun go down on your wrath, lest you give place to the devil. So the enemy, that spirit, that is trying to be your spouse, may try to get you to be angry, fuming mad, where you're going to bed, angry, and you violate that part of the Bible, and then it can say that it has a legal right to you. So you have to shut those spirits down, and you truly have to reflect the image of Christ. And it's a part of the reason why you have to be close to him. So when you're doing these things and you're reflecting the image of Christ, you're showing people the love of Christ. So there are many, many different ways. And I pray this is helping you. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Oh boy. Hmm. If thou take away from the midst of thee, the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. Mm. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. And satisfy thy soul in draught. In drought. And make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water. Whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the paths to dwell in. And I end with that. So the Lord spoke about the repairer of the breach. And that's one of the things you want the Lord to do, to repair the breach. Whatsoever it is that enemy used to get in, that forms a breach. So when the Lord repairs a breach, for him to seal that breach, drive the enemy out, seal the breach, so the enemy cannot come back and forth. Because there are times when people are struggling to gain deliverance, and that's because there is a breach that the enemy is using to come in and out easily into a person's life, which makes deliverance harder. So please remember Isaiah 58 and I invite you to study it and let the Holy Spirit guide you throughout the process. And I look at my notes here real quick. So a couple of things regarding these spirits is you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're a Christian, then you truly need to make him Lord, meaning you're obeying his commands. Jesus said, if you love him, keep his commandments. So you have to ensure you're keeping his commandments. For everyone, you have to repent of your sins. And by repenting, turning away from those sins. The spirits will try to present those sins to you. But that is not you actually sinning. And the Lord knows. 
Jesus is a righteous judge. So he sees what these spirits are trying to do. Renounce all evil covenants. It doesn't matter if you made them or someone else made them, like a ancestor made those covenants and those covenants have been reinstated throughout the generations. It doesn't matter. Renounce those covenants in the name of Jesus. Likewise, if you have a dream, renounce every evil covenant that was made in those dreams. If you can't remember the dreams, or you're not sure if you dreamt, just do a general renunciation. Say, Lord, if I had a dream and it wasn't of you, I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Your word says, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. So I'll have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. And I ask the Lord to break those covenants. A key thing is to go and sin no more. These devils are just looking for an excuse. For example, um, I like to laugh. And there are times I may like to tell jokes. And in joking about certain things, it may not be, a, it may not be the truth. You may make something up. But as a result of these kind of spirits, you can still laugh, you can still joke, but you can't fib. If you tell a lie, you're violating the Lord's commandments, and the devil will use that as an excuse to come back in. So you have to be careful regarding how you live. You truly have to live a holy life, because these devils are just looking for an excuse. Jesus a lot of times he'd heal people, or there are times when he healed people, or, for example, in John 8, he pardoned the woman who had committed adultery, and he told her, go and sin no more. He healed a man, and he told him, go and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. So when the Lord starts the deliverance process, things you used to do before, if you used to watch pornography, stop. If you used to masturbate, stop. If you used to commit adultery, stop. Fornicate, stop. Especially anything re regarding sexual immorality, stop. So you have to go and sin no more. And if you sin, because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, repent immediately. And repeat as necessary because a part of this is the enemy will keep on trying to come back whether he quote unquote has a legal right or not he'll keep on trying to come back and you have to keep on shutting him down but it's not just based on your own willpower because the enemy is stronger than us they're spirits and for example they don't need sleep and they'll wait for us to go to sleep in order to attack that's why we need the, the Lord's protection. The Lord may direct you to um, read some of the Psalms. For example, Psalm 91. And not only, in a sense, are those kind of things activating the Lord to take action, but when reading those things, it is strengthening your faith. You can pray and ask the Lord that if these spirits attack, that he exposes them in the name of Jesus. If they're trying to come like that movie star that you used to lust after five years ago, that the Lord lets you know that that is a spirit so you can deal with the spirit and rebuke it in the dream. Or if anything happens in a dream, that you wake up as soon as you realize what is going on so you can renounce those actions. Okay, I'm going to pray for you a little bit. And Father, I lift up your son or your daughter in prayer. Lord Jesus, you spent six hours on a cross shedding your blood to redeem your son or your daughter. Your son or your daughter has repented of his or her sins, has renounced all demonic covenants, 
So in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over every single person listening to this message. Everyone who has accepted Jesus as his or her Lord and Savior and wants nothing more to do with these foul spirits who are trying to impose their will on a child of the Most High God. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of the Lord's son or daughter and never return in the name of Jesus. The blood, the power, the authority, and the word of God in the name of Jesus is against you. There is no marriage between a human and a spirit. None. In the beginning, God created man. He sought a suitable helper for him, and for that he created a woman. There is no marriage between a human being and a spirit. So in the name of Jesus, I break those marriages. I break those covenants in the name of Jesus. Every single thing you have implanted in the person's life, take it out and get it out. And you get out in the name of Jesus. Every single thing. In addition, when the thief is caught, the thief must pay sevenfold. So in the name of Jesus, I command you to restore every single thing you've stolen sevenfold in the name of Jesus. Fail to obey, my Lord, I call upon every single angel that you can send to your son or daughter to restore and redeem every single thing that was stolen. My Lord, I pray that this person's sleep who has been invaded, regardless of the frequency, that you will shut those dreams down, shut those visions down. If the person's ever been engaged in anything where the third eye was open, I speak that those eyes be closed, that the quote unquote third eye be closed in the name of Jesus, and that any dream or vision this person is having, that it will come from you. My Lord, you said that you give your beloved sweet sleep, and I pray sweet sleep in the name of Jesus. I pray that rather than being a battlefield, that this person's sleep will be you lead them by green pastures and still waters, and that you, Lord Jesus, will be their shepherd. And yes, your rod and your staff, it provides a comfort to us. And at the same time, my Lord, I ask you to come against every single wolf that is trying to pluck one of your sheep out of your hand and the Father's hand in the name of Jesus. My Lord, in accordance with Joel 2.25, I ask you to restore all the years the locust, the cankerworm, the palm worm, and the caterpillar has eaten in the name of Jesus. Every single thing restored in the name of Jesus. Health restored in the name of Jesus. And arguably, most importantly, my Lord, restore this person's relationship with you. Restore this person's faith in you. Restore this person's love for you. Let him or her know that no one, absolutely no one, will pluck him or her out of your hands. My Lord, I ask you cover, cover, cover this individual with your blood. Cleanse him or her of all sin, all unrighteousness. Any spirit that appears in this person's dream that is not of you, my Lord, I ask you to give them the wherewithal, the discernment to know that that spirit is not of you. And every time the spirit tries to use its strength, its powers to prevent this person from using the name of the Lord, that you, my Lord, will come to that person's rescue, and that any devil that tries to cross the line, and I plead the blood of Jesus Christ around this person, this person's entire family, blessings, everything covered by the blood of the Lamb, and any evil spirit that tries crossing the line, that my Lord, you will send an angelic force superior either in number, power, and or authority to dispatch that devil in the name of Jesus and cast into the abyss to be tormented ahead of time in the name of Jesus. Likewise, my Lord, every opportunity has been stolen from this individual. I ask you to bring it back in the name of Jesus. If there was a job that was stolen, I ask you to bring a job, my Lord, that pays twice as much. 
if there was a marriage that was destroyed as a result of a quote-unquote spiritual spouse, that if it is in accordance with your will that you restore that marriage in the name of Jesus and that it will be a testimony. Because my Lord, in Revelation 12, 11, it states that we overcome the enemy with the blood of a lamb, the word of her testimony, and not loving her lives unto the death. And I pray that the restoration of any such marriage will bring glory to you, my Lord, that it will bring glory to you, that they will be able to testify how maybe they were broken for a period of time, but you brought them back together. And my Lord, if it is not your will that they be brought together, that you keep them apart, my Lord, that you keep them apart in the name of Jesus, unless there are children involved that they need a co-parent. And my Lord, if it is your will for anyone to get into a relationship that is truly of your will, that you bring those relationships together, and that, my Lord, you prepare the hearts of the person who's coming to be with this individual who has suffered the trauma of having to deal with a spirit that is trying to be its spiritual spouse. My Lord, I thank you that you said you'll never leave or forsake us. And I thank you for always being with us, my Lord. I thank you for always being with us. Also, my Lord, if the person should have been married or in a relationship with someone and that person was driven away and the person is still available, my Lord, I ask you to call that person forward in the name of Jesus and let your will be done in the name of Jesus. I thank you, my Lord, for breaking every demonic yoke, every demonic covenant, every demonic burden. My Lord, your burden is light and your yoke is easy. Those are the only yokes that we want. Those are the only ones. We come to you, my Lord, seeking rest. Seeking rest. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. The one who, you do not give peace as the world gives. You give peace that transcends understanding. And my Lord, you being the Prince of Peace, we ask you for that peace that transcends understanding. We ask you to heal every single thing. You being the repairer of the breach, we ask you to repair the breach. Seal us unto the day of redemption. Drive away every single devil that has occupied a place, either in us physically, spiritual, or elsewhere, that only belongs to you. We will not serve another God. We will not have another idol. My Lord, you are a jealous God. And we ask you to pour out your jealous wrath on every single spirit that is not of you, that is trying to take your place. Heavenly Father, you said that there is no fellowship between light and dark. Christ and Belial, a believer and an infidel. So my Lord, these quote-unquote spiritual spouses, we renounce them in the name of Jesus. As it is written in Deuteron Deuteronomy 24, we find these spirits unclean, nothing we want to fellowship with, and we divorce them by the blood of the Lamb. All the curses that they are trying to send towards us, my Lord, cursed is anyone who hangs from a tree. You, Lord Jesus, you hung from a tree in a accordance with Galatians 3, 13-14, to absorb all those curses for us. And you said that you would curse those who curse us and bless those who bless us. My Lord, every single curse that this foul spirit and its cohort has tried to put in our lives, my Lord, we take it to the cross. You said you would bless those who bless us. And those who love my blessing, they will be a curse. So all these curses go back on the heads of these foul spirits that brought them. And I thank you, my Lord. I ask you to continue to release those Abrahamic blessings in the name of Jesus. My Lord, we acknowledge that in accordance with Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, it says that if we hearken and obey, that you'd bless us in those ways. So my Lord, please help us develop the relationship with the Holy Spirit so that we will walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit, that we will hearken and obey so we can reap those blessings. If there's anything we need to do in order to facilitate the complete deliverance process, my Lord, we submit our will to you. You, our bodies are not our own. We present our bodies unto you, holy a living sacrifice as a part of our reasonable service unto you. Our bodies are not our own because you, Lord Jesus, you paid the price for those bodies, our bodies. You have redeemed us. So my Lord, we give everything to you. All that we are, all that we have, it belongs to you. So, my Lord, let your will only and your will only be done. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the one who orders our steps. So, my Lord, every single thing that we've done to come into agreement with the devil, we renounce those in the name of Jesus. We renounce those in the name of Jesus. If you feel 
Now I'm speaking to you now. If you feel, while I was praying, like your ring finger suddenly got lighter, that covenant was just broken. If you heard a ripping sound, that was a covenant, the divorce or the marriage certificate being ripped. You are free. Whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Every foul spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, rebuke you. We reject you, we renounce you. The Lord Jesus Christ, rebuke you. My Lord, you said, touch not the unclean thing. You said, come out from amongst them. Touch not the unclean thing. And you would accept us as sons and daughters. So my Lord, like the prodigal son who found himself in a pigsty, and then he came to his senses, and he returned to the Father's house. Likewise, Heavenly Father, we return to your house. We return to your house and ask you to forgive us of all of our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities. Wash us clean in the name of Jesus. My Lord, we prefer to be a street sweeper in heaven than a prince in hell. We want nothing to do with the kingdom of darkness. Nothing. So we come out from amongst them. My Lord, he said, come out from amongst them. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. My Lord, we want no fellowship. So all those fruits of the kingdom of darkness, we reject them in the name of Jesus. My Lord, in Matthew 13, 24 through 30, you said you allow the tares to grow with the weeds. But at the time of the harvest, you will uproot all those tares and cast them into your all-consuming fire. My Lord, I ask that you cleanse us with your blood, your blood, the precious blood of the Lamb, inside and out. Purge us with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Baptize us afresh. Drive out every single thing that is not off from or like you. Uproot the tears from the enemy and cast it into your all-consuming fire. We ask in the Corinth of Colossians that you blot out every handwriting that is speaking against us with the blood of the Lamb. Utterly destroy these evil covenants. We reject them. We reject Satan and his entire kingdom. Any spirit that tries coming into our dreams and our visions, masquerading as water or anything else, like Elijah called on fire from Mount, on Mount Carmel, we call on the fire on those spirits in the name of Jesus to utterly destroy them and their works in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done and your will only, my Lord. So my Lord, I thank you. Whether you do this all in one shot or one process, let your will be done and yours only. For now and forevermore, in Jesus' name, amen. Repeat this process as often as necessary. But again, whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Listen to His voice and what He says about you. Listen to His voice. God bless you.